those words are, 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 uh, were crafted by the person I'm about to introduce to you. Gail Roma Santa is, a, is an author, uh, is the co-author of the book with the, with the late Don Mabalon, uh, and Andre Siban was the illustrator. And uh, without further ado, these are the people that c created the Journey for Justice. joining us on this journey. I think there are so many journeys here that we can talk about. Um, we could talk about our journey today together as a Filipino American community. We can talk about the journey for justice, the life of Larry Itliong uh, that we worked on for the last two years. And um, each of you have your own journey and we all intersect here today and of which um, for that I am very grateful. Um, my journey began, I talked a little bit about it yesterday um, in the evening. We had a panel uh, that was facilitated by Dr. Rosales, Oliver Rosales there in the back. And it was with Jesse, um, Dawn's husband. And I talked a little bit about it, but I wanna say sometimes the stories that you run away from are the ones that are gonna be the most impactful in your life. Um, and so I left Stockton right after high school and I let my parents know that I was absolutely American and I was leaving, I was getting out, I was running away. And I basically did, I got kicked out when I was 17. Hi mom and dad, <laughs> you remember right? And um, when I was a senior in high school I moved in with my best girlfriend and her family and they were a white family. And, um, I was American through and through. My, my, own, my own history though, was that of an immigrant coming from the Philippines, born in Manila, but my mother's side of the family were actually here since the 30s and they were farm workers. And while we didn't have an Agbayani village, my family had a farm, an eight um, bedroom farm out in Brentwood, California. And in each one of those rooms were my mom's side of the family, the Selga, family, they had run, all the boys in the family had run away from the Philippines when they were teenagers, and there were eight of them, there were brothers and cousins, and in each room of that house, they lived in each of those bedrooms. And uh, we were raised by them, I called um, one of them uh, Lolo, Lolo Vic, he had lots of white hair, shocking white hair, um, and they really formed my identity. And um, when I created the publishing house, Bridge and Delta, it really was about us driving from Stockton to the farm every weekend. And we would have to go through three, bridge, three bridges and the Delta River. And we would drive next to those levees, levees um, and the farmland out there. And if any of you have driven out there along Highway 12, um, you know how treacherous it, it is. In fact, my dad, drove the car right into uh, the water at one point, and he is here. <laughs> and he has good stories about that. But, but in any case, I ran away from those stories. Um, and, I, and I grew up with those monos, and those stories and the love that I have for them and the, my family that we were all together, and there's still a little bit of heartbreak there. Even though there's so much love, there's so much heartbreak at the same time. And so as I got older, I had a chance to go back home. I had a chance to go back home and, and live uh, where I was from and take my family. And so about 11 years ago, I had this feeling and I told my husband, I said, I don't know what it is, but I think I have to go back home. I don't know, there's a story that needs to be told. I remember telling him that. And so we went back home, we had a deal. He was born and raised in San Francisco and, I, and, and he needed to do something creative out there. So we made a deal. If we went out there, he could learn about grapes. I went to a high school named after a grape and honestly vineyards are really not anything you know there's when you go to the san francisco bay area they're so fancy and they're, it's all about luxury but when you and they talk about wine but when you've lived among the vineyards and you know what that's like and and um you know my family was able to live among them for me as an adult you know how dirty it is and, and any of you wine aficionados out there 
your wine is getting crushed with spiders and with dirt. And <laughs> that's, that, that, so, the, so when we're talking about terroir, terroir, the land, we're talking about the spiders, we're talking about the dirt, and we're talking about something that's very specific in the earth at that time when your grape was crushed. Um, but we loved it. And, and so it, it is that going back home for me and living back home that I was able to call up one of my best friends, Dr. Don Mabalon, and tell this story um, uh, about Larry Itliong. And as a mom of four, I was looking for a book about Larry Itliong. And I knew that um, there wasn't a book about him when I was in college 20 some odd years ago. There had to be one now. So in 2016, I Googled it, and there, was, there wasn't one. Um, in fact, there wasn't any illustrated books, nonfiction, about Filipino American history. So I want everybody here to understand that fact and how deep that is. In 2016, there wasn't a book about Larry Itlion in our history. In 2016, there wasn't a book about very specifically our Filipino American heroes. And so I thought, well, gosh, if there isn't one now, I guess, we have to do it. <laughs> we have to DIY. And we weren't going to ask for permission from anybody. We weren't going to go to the traditional route and ask a mainstream publisher because if they didn't do it by now, they really weren't looking to do it in the future. And so Don and I and Dre, we worked very hard for the last two years uh, just at breakneck speed trying to get this book out before someone did it before us, someone who wasn't from the community, someone who, um, it's someone that didn't get vetted through so many people. So, so when you read the book, know that so many people read this. So many children read this. In fact, the first draft, kids, and some kids here who were in my family read this and told us it was boring. Um, and so Don and I went through and probably wrote it 27 to 30 times or more. One of my jobs, in addition um, to being with Don and us crafting all this scene work within the book, was try to stop Don from going into draft 31, 32, 33, 34. She had so much information and she has still so much to give. Even though she's not here physically, she honestly has so much left to give. Her research is still out there. In fact, this year or the next year, Jessie can confirm she actually had a publisher lined up um, where she was going to deliver the draft of her full full biography about Larry Itliong. And that was her life work. She's been doing this for the last 20 years. So when you have this book in your hand, know that Dawn did not read this story and rewrite it and regurgitate it onto this book. We didn't work that way. This is absolutely Dawn's research that she's done. She had to weave together this story with the pieces that she found. You know, she would, it, it, through oral histories, through transcripts from interviews that Larry Itliong did, through notes, notes that she would find, meeting notes that she would find in the UFW archives at Wade State University, um, um, through other interviews and just, and, and court, and legal documents and, and um, you know, public documents, she had to hunt for this. And, you know, it, as a professional historian, she was very thorough and she was very meticulous. And when you look in the back and you'll see our thank you page, uh, there's so many people, librarians, journalists, academics, educators, that we have read this book and they gave us their feedback. And to that, we were open, because we know stories like this are not created in a vacuum. Uh, we'd love to take credit. I mean, that's awesome. But in all honesty, it took a community to really bring this story to life. It really took all of us here, and many of you might have donated to the Indiegogo campaign, um, and we raised over $35,000 to create this book and also to create the next three books in it history series specifically about Filipino American uh, heroes uh, for students, their families, and their caregivers. And so Dawn only wanted to do four books. I was trying to push her to do eight, but she was like, girl, come on now. <laughs> Just do four. <laughs> She's like, that's about five to 10 years. Let's do four. So we're going to do four. And 
they're definitely going to be dedicated to Dawn and the memory of her and the research that's still alive, that is still out there. And I know if she was here today, she would implore all of you to look into your family's history, to look and talk to your elders, to talk to your parents, to, to talk to others who have this information and mind them for it. I think one of the things that I got I get asked a lot now, and what I asked Dawn, first meeting I had with her when we were doing the book, was how come Larry's story got buried? And, and I think, and I just had a conversation with Dylan Delvo, the executive director of Little Manila Rising in Stockton, and we talk about this, and a lot of it really has to lay on our shoulders as a Filipino American community, that we need to ask for these stories. We need to support these stories when they're out, just like we all are here today. Um, and we need to keep on going. We need to take pieces of Dawn's work, and while we may not be able to do everything that she did, we need to take a piece of it and run with it. So young people out there, um, you should definitely um, seek to do that and start building uh, your work start working with your friends. All, everyone that I've worked with, I'm so grateful, have been my friends for 20 years or more. We've been working artistically direct, uh, together. And so I know that um, this was one of our dreams when we talked about um, finishing this book and launching it was to bring it back to Filipino Hall. And I remember talking to Dawn and we said, girl, when this book makes it to Filipino Hall, we gonna cry, right? <laughs> and, and, and I am. I, I know I cried yesterday if you guys were there. I did an ugly cry. Um, and I'm gonna do it again. Um, but it's so historic to be here and to bring this book home to meet Larry's family, to be within the Delano community where this book belongs. And I'm really honored to be able to take this book and try to tell the rest of the country with Fonz Delano, um, Fonz Delano and Fonz National to be going to different cities throughout the country and meeting with the Filipino American communities there and telling them about Delano, telling, about, telling them about Larry Itliong and telling them about our Filipino American history.